As Adolf Hitler came into power, he created a number of different establishments and organisations to help him solidify his control over the people of Germany. One of the most brutal and infamous groups established was the Gestapo, the official secret police of Nazi Germany. It was initially created by Hermann Göring, but it became incredibly feared, and a police force administered brutal executions, torture, and deported thousands of people to concentration and extermination camps, where they were killed as soon as they entered the gates. After the Second World War, the Gestapo was declared a criminal organisation at the Nuremberg Trials, and many former members of it were sentenced to death. The Gestapo established headquarters in occupied lands, but in Norway, there was one base referred to as the House of Horrors, for the evil treatment that occurred there. Join us today as we look at the horrific torture of the Gestapo House of Horrors, and remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. The Archivet or Archive, which today is found in Kristiansand in Norway, has a darker history than the record storage facility suggests. Today it's known as the Archivet Peace and Human Rights Centre, but during the Second World War, it was a Gestapo headquarters established inside of southern Norway. Within the walls, there was a huge amount of torture and suffering which occurred, with the Gestapo agents brutalising the prisoners for information. Norway began to be occupied by Nazi Germany on the 9th of April 1940, and armed resistance ended months later in June 1940, but from this time until the end of the war, Norway was occupied by the Wehrmacht. Rule was assumed by the Reich Commissariat of Norway, and worked in collaboration with pro-German puppet government, called the Quisling Regime. The Norwegian king at the time fled to London and formed a government in exile, but the Nazis sought to impose their rules and persecution onto the people of the country. They began to round up and arrest a number of Jews who were then sent to concentration camps, and a number were sent towards Germany, where they were exterminated in camps or killed by horrendous conditions. The Gestapo would round these men, women and children up, alongside the SS that maintained the strength of around 6,000 officers and soldiers during the Second World War. But during World War II, Christian Sand was attacked by sea from the German Navy, and also by the Luftwaffe who dropped bombs. The naval forces were met by fierce resistance on the coast, but there was fighting inside the city, and later the city was occupied by a garrison of around 800 German soldiers. But inside of Christian Sand, the Gestapo established a headquarters, and inside of this building there was great suffering and pain. The Germans occupied the archive building on the 10th of April 1940, and for the first two years of occupation, it was the German air defence soldiers who used it. However, from 1942 to 1945, the Gestapo then took control of the house and started to use it as their regional base, and the locals referred to it as a house of horror. When the Gestapo took over, Rudolf Kerner was the head of the German secret police in Kristiansand, and around 3,000 German officers came to Norway in the war and worked for the Gestapo. The building was not a prison during the war, but was a police station for the German police. Cells and torture chambers were set up there, and each day detainees from all over the area were taken for questioning. They could stay there for hours, or even weeks on end, depending on how much information they gave over. Some Norwegians turned over to the enemy and helped administer the torture, and also helped the Germans with regards to translation. One man, Ole Weyhus, was regarded as one of the most dangerous informants in Norway, and he was later accused of treason for his involvement. He said, I am 100% sure that everyone who was employed at the Archivet during the war somehow had to know what was going on, because sooner or later they could not avoid seeing the prisoners after they had been treated. The Norwegian workers worked inside and knew about the abuse and torture of the prisoners, but Ole Weyhus was sentenced to death for his crimes, and very few of the torturers were executed for their involvement. But during the years of the war, more than 3,500 people were imprisoned in the building for more than four days, and the Gestapo's headquarters became a place of torture, hatred, suffering, and evil treatment inside of southern Norway. It was known as the House of Horrors, or the Stronghold of Torture, as the prisoners would suffer greatly. Inmates were subject to very intense interrogations, and the Gestapo even forced people to conduct physical exercises, which were very tough. Inside of the Archivet building, or the Gestapo headquarters, 311 Norwegian men and women were tortured. The oldest person tortured was 67, and the youngest was just 16, and the majority were believed to have been involved in resistance activities. Also, a number of the Soviet prisoners of war were tortured there also, and many were later executed. 
Four women were tortured, and one woman named Henrietta Lorenzen was pregnant, and when she was arrested, she was examined by a German doctor who said she was four months pregnant before she was then tortured. The Gestapo placed a pillow under her stomach before they began to beat her and hit her, but she did later give birth to a child who was forced to live with Henriette's sister while she was sent to Ravensbrück concentration camp. Torture methods which were used by the Gestapo were very varied, but most involved prisoners being beaten. They used any weapons they could get their hands on, for example victims were tied by the arms and legs and were then beaten. They were whipped and also handcuffed, and the torturers targeted the vital organs of the prisoners, and many suffered with their ordeal for the rest of their lives. A number of them were also forced to stand for hours with their hands above their heads, and if they moved they were beaten worse. There was one prisoner who succumbed to his torture ordeal. A local doctor treated Pal Eichen, and he said, I treated Eichen the night before he died. He was admitted to the hospital by a German doctor with the diagnosis of asthma, however there were no signs of this disease. Eichen suffered from kidney illness and a high degree of uremia. The patient was unconscious a couple of hours before he died. He himself informed he was constantly exposed to abuse during the interrogations. He was made to lie on his stomach over a chair while two Germans beat him with clubs on his back and behind during the interrogations. He was also kicked by the Germans in the stomach, behind and genitals. Eichen had obvious marks from these abuses. The skin on his behind, the lower part of his back and stomach, and the genitals were blue-black in colour, and there was some surface grazing. Pal Eichen was the only one to die specifically from the injuries he got specifically during torture and at the time of torture, but a number later did die because of the injuries they sustained there. Prisoners were tortured with blows to the face, blows to the back, with rubber truncheons or clubs, beaten with wire, sticks or whips, and were forced into leg cramps, and even were heated very warm. Also, as mentioned earlier, there were at least 34 Soviet prisoners transferred to the building, and, when they, and they came from a number of work camps. These in particular were treated terribly, and they had been sent to the Gestapo headquarters for punishment. Around 50 Soviet POWs were executed by the Gestapo at the centre, and after the war none of these executioners or the Gestapo agents were later executed for the murders, as there was allegedly a lack of evidence, but the Gestapo themselves after the war were made to exhume the bodies of the prisoners. Many other inmates following their torture were transported to other concentration camps. A couple of prisoners were then sent to other camps, and some of these were transported on German ships, which were then hit by naval mines. Most of the casualties of the sinking of the SS Westphalen were Norwegian prisoners of war, including the men who were tortured at the House of Horrors. Some also died on transport to camps closer to the heart of the Third Reich, whilst they were being taken back towards Germany, as the war was turning against the Germans. Many of those who were transported to the House of Horrors were political leaders in the local area, and the Gestapo sought to silence them. The House of Horrors was a secret Gestapo headquarters in Norway in Kristiansand, which struck fear into the hearts of the locals around the area. They heard of the torture and killing inside the building, and were very worried about the Gestapo agents. The secret police operated in such a way which was very intimidating, and they encouraged local people to inform on others. The House of Horrors was a brutal and terrifying place in which a number of local leaders were tortured, and it was where many executions also occurred. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.